These are four big mistakes that hold so many runners back on race day. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to nail nutrition, hydration, electrolytes, and the most effective way to carry everything. I personally made each one of these mistakes, but when I corrected them, I went from running four hours and 25 minutes for the marathon to running two hours and 21 minutes and then representing my country for both the marathon and the ultra marathon. I got this brilliant question in the comments below. For my first marathon, I did okay for the training, carb loading, gels, mental preparation, but in the end failed the hydration part. In training, I have a Camelback with two liters of a sport drink or electrolyte drink. But for racing, I only thought one banana and an electrolyte drink in the morning would suffice. Oh, I was wrong. I did okay until 25K, and then by 27K, my two calves cramped up and was stumbling around. Walked and drank electrolytes, and then was able to run the final 5K. Signed up for 2025 already, more determined than ever before. Okay, so a marathon is a big thing to train towards. And we've got three factors that will really, really help you. The first is obviously the training. The second is nutrition. And it's so overlooked, it's frightening. But also there's hydration and electrolytes. Within the training, we want to condition the body to go long. So that dull ache that you feel in maybe the final quarter or the final third of a marathon, we want to remove that completely. And part of that comes from nutrition, and part of it comes from conditioning the quads running downhill. Got to put that into your game within marathon training. Now, as runners, we want to remove a lot of the thinking so that we can focus our entire energy, our entire existence in getting to the finish line as fast as we can. So if you think of hydration, electrolytes, and nutrition, put it all together, choose a gel or sports drink that has the hydration and the electrolytes built in. So you're not thinking of those as three categories, you're thinking it as one. And then look at the race, look at the goal. If the drink stations or the aid stations at every 5K, do the maths. What am I aiming for? How quickly am I gonna to get to that aid station? And if that means that, okay, I'm gonna take the gel just a few meters before so that you can take the gel, swill it down with water, carry that water bottle for a little to get the hydration on board, and that gel has already got the electrolytes inside so that you're ticking that box and then you're not cramping. But the beauty is practicing with that nutrition so that your body is getting used to it in the midweek interval session when you're going fast and the weekend long run when you're going far and therefore you're taking a lot more nutrition. So you're taking a gel every 20 minutes. The magic number for me is 80 grams of carbohydrate. So that a gel with 25 grams of carb would be 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes you're taking a gel or every 30 minutes you're taking a 40 gram gel. Depending on the size of the gel, how many carbohydrates is your main number that you're looking at. But look for a gel that looks after that first box. It looks after the electrolytes. So it's got the sodium, maybe the magnesium, and the potassium inside so that you're not getting cramps and you're not even thinking that it's a problem and you're not worried about it. Because if you worry about it, the more you worry about something, the more you think about something, the bigger that problem gets. Just wanna take it out of the equation so that you can focus on your pace. Now, the big thing that I see there that a lot of people may overlook is the camelback. If we're doing all our long runs with a camelback and a lot of our other runs, because maybe you live in a hot country or maybe it's the only way that you see it to be able to carry liquid or carry your gels, etc., that's gonna change the way that you run. And what I see, especially from ultra runners, uh, but marathon runners as well, if you're not wearing that camelback, on race day, and again, always look at the goal. What does that look like? What am I gonna be wearing on race day? Get used to wearing that on the Wednesday interval session and the weekend long run especially, but for all your running, or as most of your running as possible. So that race day seems like any other run. If you're not gonna be wearing a camelback for the race, don't wear it in, the tra in training, because you're running in a different way. It affects your center of gravity. It affects you, the way you move over the ground. And whether it's like 0.1% or 1%, the way that you use your muscles will be slightly different. Another analogy which will help you with this is, I know a 2.30 marathon runner and tried to pace his wife to run in three hours and 20 minutes for a marathon. It was cramping from 25K. So it wasn't a case that he couldn't handle that pace. He could have handled that pace easily. He's done it many, many times, but he never ran 
for 42K at three hours 20 for the marathon. He'd never run at that pace before. So all of a sudden he's using his muscles in a different way and therefore cramping up. It affects you in exactly the same way if you're carrying something like a camelback. Two liters is two kilograms. So if you think about how that alters and it's at the top of your body, so it's changing the way that you move over the ground and it's uncomfortable. And you're not, going to get, you're not going to be used to what you've got access to during the race either. So if you're not wearing it for the race and you can't just sip whenever you want, maybe that comfort is taken away from you and therefore you know, you're not stocking up at the aid stations or the drink stations because you're not used to grabbing the drink, keeping hold of, hold, hold of it as, as long as you can. And that's another thing that I see from runners. Runners will often grab the drink, whatever it is, Powerade, Gatorade, Lucas Aid, it'll grab it and it's 500 ml bottle. It's big, it's half a kilogram. They'll drink one sip and then throw it on the, throw it on the floor. So they've not got any hydration, any electrolytes, any carbohydrate from it. It's just one sip. It's literally just quenched the first, nothing else. What you want to do is, and the reason they do that is because they think carrying a heavy weight is going to take, is going to take time off, off the final time. You want to carry that for a little bit longer. Take it in, take a sip trying to get 100, 150 mil and get used to that also in training. So that once you're taking it in and it feels normal, then you can discard it later. But for carrying that for an extra sort of 100 to 150, 200 meters, whilst you get enough water in to hydrate yourself and get the electrolytes, again, check what the, the race is gonna have as their drink and get used to that in your long runs and in your interval sessions. Super important. And the final point is, try different strategies in your training. It's the perfect time to try. So if you're gonna try a different gel, try it in your interval session or try it in your long run. Try to make your stomach bulletproof. So no matter what you have to take in, it's possible because you're used to taking anything in. If you're doing ultra marathon runs, you quickly realize that people are just grabbing whatever they can get their hands on. And as some of you have mentioned in the comments, it becomes an eating festival with some running thrown in. It's exactly that, and whether it's bananas, potato chips, whatever, people are just grabbing the calories or what serves them at, at that time. And we can learn a lot from ultra runners for that. If people are running 10, 15, 20 hours plus, they have to get used to whatever's available. And very quickly you go into survival mode and realize that whatever it is in front of me, I'm gonna eat it because it means energy moving forward. And you, you can take something from that and put it in Marathon runners, road runners, like, oh, it's a slightly different gel and therefore it's probably gonna affect my stomach and I'm not gonna take it. Cramp five kilometers later. Super important to get used to whatever there is out there on the course. And again, plan ahead, see what drink they've got in place. Usually at the sort of 50 mile, 20 mile mark, there are gels available as well. See what they are, practice with those during, during your, your training runs. So in summary, if you just look after your hydration, electrolytes and nutrition, and collect those together so it's one problem and it's just ticking the box and you practice with it in your training, it's out of the way. It's something that you don't even think about and even better than that, you're super confident when it comes to that point, which means you can push on because there's not going to be any wall for you because you know how to look after your nutrition, you know how to restock your glycogen supplies, so you're gonna be able to push in that final third, that final quarter when everybody else who used to be like you is dropping like flies. And that's great motivation if you're, comp you're passing lots of people in the final third to get used to that. And then for the Camelback, if you're not gonna be racing with it in your marathon, don't use it in training. Get used to using whatever is in the race and get used to seeing that every 25, 30 minutes, however quick it takes you to cover five kilometers. Good luck.